Hello, and welcome to another 8-minute demo. Today we're going to be taking a look at some runbook options for transferring data generated by PowerShell scripts into SQL. I'll be doing everything in the System Center Orchestrator beta, so you'll see some new interfaces. My name is Charles Joy. I'm a Senior Business Development Manager for Microsoft. Today we're going to be talking about something that you may already be aware of and be using already, but it's something that I'm changing in the way I build my workflows, especially when it pertains to gathering information from PowerShell and then inserting it into SQL. In the past, you've seen me demonstrate runbooks where I have a run.net script executing some PowerShell, and then I'm going to pass that data to a query database object and insert or do something with it. And you know that's fine it'll work just fine but it adds a bit of overhead so you have a query database object you have the run dot net script object you're using PowerShell you're using SQL you're using multiple things to accomplish a simple task I don't know if you noticed I'm in orchestrator beta I thought I'd uh, kick that off with a very simple example um, but something that is I believe very useful and will save you a lot of execution time so back to the actual example um, I have the old way and the new way. Let me discuss the old way first where we have a custom start object or initialized data now. I'm going to take in an int value and a, and a string value. I'm going to pass that into a run.net script object and I'm just going to, it's very simple. There's nothing complex to this. I'm just marshalling the data through here and in the published data tab we can see that I'm just bringing that data through. Note on the date data I am forming it as string. If you choose date time, there's a bug here that uh, the object will fail. So do not choose date time. Make sure you choose string if you're using date data. It doesn't really matter because you could always convert it on the fly in another object. This data is then going to be used in a query database object, which is an insert into a PowerShell to SQL demo table that I have here. You can see nothing's in it right now. And you can see I have ID, string, int, and date data fields. And it's just going to insert based on the data. It's a common scenario, and uh, I'll just kick it off from the new orchestration console. So you can see that in this demonstration, too. If you haven't already installed the beta and tried it out, I would recommend it. All right, I'm going to hop down here, and we want just in here, runbooks. And we want 1.0, start runbook. You can see the interface is a little different. We're just going to type some values in here. Hit start. We'll say that it has been submitted. And now we can go and take a look at the log. And you can see that it completed all three steps just fine. And now if we look in the table, you can see hello world, blah, blah. So that's fine. It did it just fine. It did it quickly. You can see within you know a second there not going to notice much difference. You're not passing that much data. Now if we go to the new way, you'll notice that I do not have a data, query database object in here. I replaced it with a send platform event object. Uh, you don't need it at all. I just wanted to show you that now, instead of the query database object, I put everything in a run.net script. And of course, I'll provide all this PowerShell up on the blog post. We're simply creating a connection to the SQL Server on the database with a connection string, simple connection string. I mean, yours will vary, obviously. I'm going to get the information just like we did before. And this time, we're going to create a SQL insert statement using the variable data here. So we're going to pass string, int, and date data. Remember, it's string, so you got to put it in quotes. And we're going to execute, and we're going to keep track of the insert count. And that's where this guy is going to report the insert count. So number, how many? Well, it's going to be one, so it's not going to be that complex. But you could use that insert count as a filter here, saying uh, insert count greater than zero, so that you don't, you know, move on to the next step without it being greater than zero. And of course, you can document that. If I have link labels on, I do. I, I know that it has to be greater than zero for it to continue, and then we'll report the insert, insert count here. It's just one option. You could have done that over here as well. You'd have to create another variable and um, pass that variable as well. And then you could you know, prevent things from being inserted. But back to the new way here. Now we're just going to check this in. We'll go to the orchestration console. Go to here. 
to Dado the new way. There. Run, hit run book. String. And data. I like that number. So I'll use that. Submitted. We'll go back. It's running. We could see here that, again, it took a second, not a big deal, but it was successful just like the other one. So this shows both methods are successful. But why would you use one over the other? Well, in this scenario, we're just inserting one piece of data. There's really no, no difference unless you wanted to save the number of objects you're using for a single task. This runbook takes two activities, a run.net script and a query database, to accomplish the same thing for this runbook it's taking care of it in one activity, the run.net script object. Now it does look as though this is way more complicated, but this is all boilerplate stuff. Once you get it down, you could actually variableize all of this so you don't have to really worry about it and you just reuse the variables or reuse objects that have this information in it, updating the insert statement as necessary. Now, like I said, there's not much difference here in time. But I've set up some workflows here that where I show the difference when we're dealing with multi-value. And I call it multi-value speed trials, as you can see there. So here we are. We have a run.net script object doing some PowerShell. It's grabbing process data. So I'm just doing a get process on the runbook server. And if I go to the publish data tab, I'm just publishing that out. And I'm going to push that data directly into an insert statement. It'll in every multi-value item will execute this query database activity one for each time and for uh, demonstration purposes I've just hard-coded a zero and then current timestamp in here so I don't have to worry about getting any other data I'm just getting the process data from the run.net script activity so if I go back here you can see I'm just getting the name now I'm gonna go ahead I have run this in the past you can see it took six seconds there I'm gonna run it again Actually, I'm going to go ahead and reset that table. So you can see the table's reset. I am going to now kick this off. I don't have to go through the orchestration console because it doesn't have any input properties. And you can see this time it took six seconds yet again. If we check the log, you can see we executed run.net script activity once and then query database once for every single process that needed to be inserted so that not only takes up time but it takes up space in the logs and um, it adds a level of complexity as far as the uh, runbook is concerned now let's go to the new way where we have just one object and in this object I'll show you now the script gets a little more complex because you have to do a for each statement it's not that big of a deal and I guess you could think of this method as really taking the scripting to the next level and removing objects and it really depends on what you want to do but this is a perfectly f uh, fine way to go about this activity so same story here this is connection information we're getting the process data like before instead of just pumping that to a query database activity we're doing a for each for every piece of data in process data from this array that's created I want to create an insert SQL statement and then I want to execute that statement and up the insert count and so on and so forth. So we can see here that each thing will get inserted within the actual PowerShell script and that is actually much faster as you'll see in a second here. And because I'm not worried about what's going on next, I'm not going to take, I mean, we're not going to have another object so I'm not going to look at insert count, but we can uh, we can do that. I'll, I'll show you the, what the value is. I'll turn logging on. So let me turn logging on. All right, check it in and run it. You can see here it took one second and I was able to refresh it real quick. And that's even with writing the information to the log, you know, more verbose than the other one. So this is, there's a insert count 46 and Oh, but I never showed that the values actually got inserted. Obviously, we'll have 92 rows. Um, the first 46 will be from the first one. You can see here, and then the which went from 10.17.09, or started at 10.17.04, and went all the way to 10.17.09. So almost six seconds. And then this one started at 10, 19, 24, 
and went all the way and stayed within the same second. So you could see one was drastically faster because we didn't have to take data from one object, pass it to the next object, and move it down uh, down the line. It's just it was just simply faster, and you could see that in the logs here, as it was within one seconds here, and then the old way was you know that six seconds, five point um, a little bit seconds on uh, these options. So. Um, I will post the PowerShell here, so you'll you'll have all of this. So you could just change out this Get Information section and then update your insert statement based on whatever table that you have. Uh, but this should be a, an alternative if you're noticing your workflows are running slow. You know, if you're getting a large amount of information from one object, PowerShell object, and you're uh, passing it into a query database activity, it might be taking a long time. Um, because it has to do each one individually, and uh, this is just a, a faster way to do it. So I hope this was useful. I found it very useful in my day-to-day -day activities with Orchestrator, and uh, enjoy. We certainly appreciate you watching. Thank you.